we've been testing 3D printed props for our RC planes. Would they work? Would they fly? Would I even be able to print them without supports? The answer was yes, mostly, sort of. Even with a low RPM geared motor, pieces of this prop left a decent sized gash in the wall when our test stand failed. I've yet to find all the pieces, but this one landed about 15 feet away. We've been wanting to 3D print toroidal props ever since reading about MIT's Lincoln Laboratories design, which they patented back in 2020. Due to the design, these are more suited to additive manufacturing than injection molding. The internet was buzzing with wild claims of toroidal props with 100% efficiency, but MIT was more concerned with dampening the weird high-pitched whine generated by drone props. With a traditional prop, the main culprit of all that noise and the inefficiency is the swirl of air generated at the propeller's tip. Any airfoil can have the same problem. You see, a lot of airliners have winglets on their wingtips to break up or at least reduce the intensity of that tip vortex. MIT had come up with essentially a tipless prop design. Unfortunately, when we were first reading about all this cool stuff, I had just started 3D printing and all I had was a CR-10S and no skills to design or even 3D print a decent prop. Fast forward to earlier this year and I had a chance to review the industrial sized Form Labs Form 4L, along with some of the strongest but still flexible resin out there, Form Labs Tough 2000. This printer is an absolute beast, and the gallon jugs of resin that came with it cost almost as much as the GDP of a small nation, but the results are pretty amazing. I also tried some more pedestrian resin mixed up with some flexible Soriatex Tenacious, and the result was great, but a little more fragile. I did give filament 3D printing a shot, but the results are a little bit fragile, and I don't quite trust this on a plane. Thankfully, I only had two props that failed while we were using them. The first was caused by a prop strike while landing, and the second one was when our test stand broke and the prop hit it. We tested a bunch of props and flew with the four best, two toroidal and two traditional. To get a good baseline, we tested a regular prop that we had purchased. Sorry, geek alert. <laughs> Getting the right prop for a plane is not as straightforward as you might think. There are two main variables in prop design, diameter and pitch speed. There's a ton more, but I don't want to bore you any more than I already am. Typically, the larger diameter of the prop, the more thrust it will generate, assuming that the motor can turn it. The pitch of the prop blades roughly translates into the forward distance the prop would travel in one rotation, and if it was moving through a solid rather than through air. This brings me to our favorite prop, the props. <laughs> this is a 14 inch diameter, four inch pitch paint stirrer that is completely useless on even a super draggy airframe. There's not enough pitch. This is a 4.7 inch diameter, 4.7 inch pitch prop. Even on a super slick, tiny pylon racer, this is very difficult to use uh, because the prop doesn't have any thrust. We're going to test these props on our trusty GWS slow stick. It can take a beating and get taped right back together, so we're not worried about crashing it if things go wrong. And here's our test rig. It measured static thrust using a postal scale. The prop is in a pusher configuration, and we have a watt meter to measure the amp draw. Static thrust isn't the only useful metric, but it's the most important for a slow, draggy plane like our slow stick, or a drone that spends a lot of time hovering. First, we tested a 10 by 6 GWS prop that works terrific on that slow stick. The control prop generated 1380 grams of thrust at 22 amps, which is nearly perfect for this plane. The plane weighs less than 800 grams, even with a hefty run cam mounted on it, and that amp draw keeps the motor on the sunny side of self-destruction, assuming a bit of throttle discipline. For traditional props, we first printed a 9x4.5 three-bladed prop from Matt Endy on Thingiverse. Links are in the description. This prop seemed to be in the same class as the controls, so we didn't change it too much. We just cut a bit off of the trailing edge near the center so the hub could sit flat on the build plate. Sadly, it still needed supports, which uglied up an otherwise beautiful design. This prop generated 850 grams of thrust at a little over 16 amps. 
we needed to shift the slow stick center of gravity for it to fly better, so we did a little parkside repair and let her go again. It flew much better this time. We'll be hanging on to this prop since it's efficient enough to keep the motor happy at a lower amp draw than the others. Unfortunately, the landing gear fell off at the end of the flight. The plane hit the ground at the best angle possible, and the prop sustained no damage. It helps that this one's made out of Formlab's Tough 2000 resin, making it almost indestructible. We also tried a 10x6 two-bladed prop from Bartek on Thingiverse with no modifications, which also got uglied up by the supports. This prop generated 1,000 grams of thrust at a little over 18 amps. Whenever you're ready, baby. For toroidal props, we tried printing several, but the best were these two loop blades from striking FPV on printables. The designer has a whole series of YouTube videos that are terrific. The largest prop he designed is a 7x3, which only generated 250 grams of thrust while drawing 9 amps. We first flew the small 7x3 toroidal prop, and predictably, it didn't have enough thrust to fly well. It crashed almost immediately. This prop was printed using standard resin with a touch of Soraya Tech Tenacious thrown in. Unfortunately, the prop did not survive the flight. A quick jaunt to Tinkercad was necessary to increase the diameter to 8 inches. Changing the pitch is tougher without mad cat skills, but doubling the height of the prop increased the blade area a lot, and it had the added benefit of making the tips less fragile. The resulting 8-inch toroidal prop generated almost 1,100 grams of thrust at 18 amps. We had to hand launch the slow stick due to that missing landing gear, and it took flight like a homesick angel. It's almost perfectly matched to this airframe, and the onboard video shows some wild effects looking through the prop at certain RPMs. I'm not sure if it's any more efficient or if it's any quieter than the other props, but it seems to fly as well as our control. It would be interesting to try to refine this prop even more, but Formlabs wanted their printer back. And that's okay, because I can still use my sponsor, PCBWay, to make some extra large resin prints using their industrial machines. They have a huge selection of resin for anything we might need to print, from standard prototyping resins to ultra-tough, high-temp resins that are strong enough to make injection molds. PCBWay can also handle custom printed circuit boards, CNC machining, injection molding, and every kind of 3D printing. They have fast turnaround times and worldwide shipping, plus quotes are free. So why not upload your files today and see what PCBWay can do for you? Thanks, PCBWay.
this was a really fun project to do and I learned a lot about props along the way. Now, if you enjoy coming along for the ride, please let me know in the comments below because I read everything. We've got a couple of ideas for other things we can do videos on involving the RC planes. Like right now we're working on a device that we're gonna stick on the plane and we can remote control a trigger so that we could drop parachute men or maybe do a little target practice. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that video and until then, keep printing.